So the difference is, do I think she's pretty? Do I like her? Yeah. Do I think what's beautiful about this woman? What's sexy about this woman? Why is she hot? What do I do? I like her. Am I interested? That's sexy. The other side is, does she like me? Oh my God, is she going to go home with me? How do I get her to like me? Yeah. Does she like Does she like me again? You know these types of things. Do you hear the two polarizations on the two thoughts? That's the thoughts. That polarization is huge, and uh, and it's a it's a completely different attitude. It creates a whole. It's an indifference to outcome. Do I like you? I mean, what's beautiful about you? What do I like about you? Hmm, let me enjoy you for a minute and see what else I like about you. It creates a whole different feeling versus. Do you like me? What, what can I do to make you like me? Um, oh God, I hope she likes me. Hi, my name is Brian. Um, yeah, where are you from? Uh, God, I hope she likes me in the back of your mind. There's a whole different feeling created. One is attachment to outcome. One is, is I am thinking of me first, which makes you more sexy, which is actually more giving than the other one. The other, the, the, the saying, do you like me, is not giving at all. I'm putting all my emotional security on you and saying, like me back. Otherwise, I don't have any value. Yeah, I'm asking her to support me, take care of me, be my emotional blanket, whatever you want to call it, to be my self-esteem. The other way, I'm saying, I'm my own self-esteem, and I give you the gift of liking you with no expectation of return. You know, If I like you, it's going to be real, and that's a real gift. And the, humans can feel the difference. Just when I did it to you, could you feel the difference between the two ways of thinking that I was going there? It has a huge impact on the, on the person in front of you. This is why words don't really matter. Our subcommunication is so damn strong, it's ridiculous. We communicate so much non-verbally, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, um, and as you get better and better and better, like back in the early days when I learned this stuff way many years ago, People would go out and they would learn all these routines and lines and things to say and they would work really hard. And yeah, they'd score here and there and they'd get a little better at them. And then as they got better and better and better, eventually they just said, hi. Hi, what's your name? And they said, wow, this works now and it didn't work before. Why? Because the polarity inside you reversed. The first time you said hi, it was always, hi, do you like me? Huh? What's your name? And later it becomes, hi, do I like you? What's your name? And that shift was everything. It changed everything. It changed the whole game. And, um, and so being in that tension is huge. Being able to sit in it and marinate in it and play in it and actually even enjoy the pauses. Not be scared of the pauses. Matter of fact, the pauses can be the best part. This is why it doesn't take much. If I can just sit in a pause and say hi, and just sit there and let her get nervous because I'm not saying anything, that's beautiful. If I can stay in the space of, do I like you? Hi and just let her be nervous about it. Because again, I'm creating tension. Now, if you'll see the person who, who plays with tension a lot, and I'm gonna, we'll come back, we'll get into this tomorrow, but you'll see the person who plays with tension a lot, but he's not playing with tension with her. He's, da he's dancing for her. It's a big difference. I might be creating tension, doing tension, saying, I could be saying, hey, you look like trouble. Oh my God, you look like trouble. What's your name? And my energy's going here, 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 but never here. And so we don't have a conversation together. I'm more of an entertainment for her. And she might laugh all night with me. And if, but if I say, hey, you look like trouble, now I'm challenging her, creating tension with her. And that's a whole different energy. Are you trouble? And now the game starts. Do you see the difference there? The other way, I'm, that's why the, where the term dancing monkey came from. Because the dancing monkey doesn't really want to get to the tension. He's dancing around it. He's creating tension just with himself. And the girls giggle and laugh and giggle and laugh and giggle and laugh. And he thinks he's doing great. But then the night, he doesn't get anywhere. And that's, uh, that's because he's not here. Hi. And this is why people who have a really good tension game with their eyes can do really well just with eye contact. Just walking around and just letting that sit and marinate and seeing how that feels and, and people connect. And so it was awesome that night. That girl came over and kissed you from your eye contact. Yeah, it looked great. So this is what we mean by open in it. So if I create a lot of tension but then I don't relax, that might be scary. It might work with some girls but not others. So the opening in it is that sense of relaxation in your body. Okay. 
Um, the next piece is, uh, as I kind of talked about it earlier, is we're going to go on a uh, uh, practice. It's pr practice versus meeting women. And I talked a little bit about this earlier, but there's a side time to practice, to go out and practice indifference, practice being proactive, practice playing with tension, and not give a fuck if you meet a woman because you're practicing indifference. If one happens to show up, awesome. And later, you, as you get more indifferent, you can put in a more solid goal. So as I develop the ability to be indifferent to outcome, then I can say, I'm choosing taking a girl home tonight. I'm choosing meeting a hot girl tonight or getting phone numbers tonight. But if I really don't have any indifference in me at all and I set a really strong goal, I'll attach right to it like glue. And then what will happen is they'll feel that neediness all over me. So developing the sense of indifference, practicing, like football players practice, right? Athletes practice. You know, you go out and you work on your... Like before I went snowboarding last week, I, I did all kinds of squats. I had to get my legs back in straight shape because I was so out of shape. And I did a lot of practice to get myself ready to go out there. And if I was ever going to compete, seriously, yeah, there'd be a lot of practice time for the competition. Well, if you want to really go out and have uh, develop your social skills, I'm not even going to say meeting women, there's a practice period of developing the sense of indifference, the sense of freedom with people, where you can actually connect and not take it personal when they reject you. That's all you're really doing. You can stay completely open, even in the face of their rejection. You know, you're really cute. We should go out sometime. You know, well, I don't think I like you. Okay. When do you want to go out, Saturday or Sunday? I said I don't like you. Awesome. So that's Sunday then, right? And you just play, and you can be free in that indifference. And that is very attractive. Girls can laugh because they can feel that you're not attached. So they know they can poke harder, which turns them on. I'm going to hit them harder. I'm going to hit them harder. Who here has seen Yaz slap me? You've, how many of you? Does she not get turned on? She gives giggles. She laughs. She wants to slap me more later. She's like, oh, can I slap you later? Because she loves the fact that I stay indifferent in it. She loves the fact that I don't take it personal, and then I play back with her. And we end up having little wrestling matches and all kinds of stuff, and she loves it. It makes her happy. Because she feels that, 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 that indifference, which is so sexy. It's not physical strength. It's your ability to not take things personal and then do what you need to do anyways. And so that's the practice. Then there's actually going out and saying, I'm going out to flirt and meet women tonight. I'm going out to hit on girls. I'm going out to get phone numbers. I'm going out to Vegas to pick up girls, for lack of a better term. And, and that's, that's another, you know, another, another time. And so you decide what you're doing that night. And if you really suck at meeting women, you might want to spend a period of time working on the practice of indifference and getting free with people, learning to have fun with people, learning to enjoy the environment, learning to connect to the, get in the bar, be able to laugh and have a good time. And then when you do, start working on meeting women. Because how many of you have seen that guy go in? He's scared of the environment. He's scared of being social. He's scared of talking. He's scared of, he wouldn't even know what to say if he did get into a conversation. And now he's expected to flirt, hit on a girl, and pick, up, pick her up and take her home tonight. Because that's the class. It ain't going to happen. If it does, it's purely by luck. Maybe because he got drunk or something like that. Not likely. So that's what the practice is about. OK? So there's time to practice, time to actually go out and flirt, meet, talk, socialize. As you get more and more indifferent to outcome and proactive in the way you respond to life, unattached, the more you can go move from practice to meeting. Just boom. And a lot of your practice will turn into meeting. You'll see it. You're in this mode of, I'm just having fun, and boom, there's a girl shows up right in front of you. And you're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're not, when you're, when you're not used to this yet, because you're, you're still working on this, she shows up in front of you, you're doing great all day, and then you realize two or three minutes into the conversation, she likes you, all of a sudden, everything goes to shit. <laughs> I, I have a, a client recently, he's very good with women, but every time the women start to like him, he gets bad. <laughs> they start to show interest. He's, he's not doing it so much anymore, he's actually let it go. But he, they'd start to show interest, and he'd just start suddenly acting weird, breaking the tension, popping up, and they'd be like, where the fuck did this guy go? You know, <laughs> Literally, he's gone right in front of them. Because, and he doesn't even know he does it. So we had to point it out to him. Hmm. And we had to point out these girls actually liked you. They did? And now the other day, he's now he's seeing it for the first time. Girls actually like me. And I'm like, yeah, they actually do. You actually do well. And then you step on your own, to, on your own feet when they actually like you. Because you don't like the, the lean in of tension coming back to you. You feel it, your nervous system immediately reacts.